Hello, and welcome to the webinar, 15 Critical KPIs to Manage and Grow Your E-Commerce Business. We're happy to have you join us today. Our goal is for you to take away actionable tips that will improve your e-commerce business. What is a KPI? KPIs are metrics, and metrics are anything that can be measured. KPIs are the most important, the key performance indicator metrics that will move your business forward. Stay away from measuring vanity metrics. These are metrics that just look and sound good, but don't improve your business. KPIs follow your strategy. So in this webinar, the focus is on the important metric for any e-commerce business to drive success and sales growth. My name is Phil Massiello. I'm a regular contributor to Practical E-Commerce, mostly on the subject of Amazon Marketplace selling. I've been building online and multi-channel brands since about 1998. I built an e-commerce and Amazon brands in beauty, fashion, food, shaving, and many other segments. Presently, I'm the founder and CEO of Hound Dog Digital Marketing Agency. Our focus is helping e-commerce brands from startups to the Fortune 100 improve their direct-to-consumer sales and strategy online and on the Amazon marketplace. Okay, what you can expect today. Your, your business KPIs are driven by your business strategy. But today, we're going to focus on the most valuable and well-rounded set of KPIs for any e-commerce business to grow their brand and scale their sales. So understanding how these KPIs all work together provides you with a much more powerful information and decision process for your business. You'll see how these 15 KPIs will lay the foundation for growth and customer retention. I broke the KPIs into three categories. Sales-focused KPIs. We're going to focus on, uh, obviously, sales, average sale, profit per order, inventory levels, customer acquisition cost, customer long-term value, and inventory turnover. And the marketing KPIs will focus on site traffic, unique visits, traffic sources, and conversion rate. Customer service KPIs, response and resolution time, contact reason classification, and then net promoter score. So let's get started. Sales and customer growth always the most important indicators of health for any business. Therefore, we have the most KPIs to look at here. The first one's obvious, right? Sales. Every business tracks sales. You should be looking at your sales, though, by hour, by day, by month, by quarter, by year. You also want to track your sales by the promotions and by the channels so you can see patterns in how your sales are trending. Nights, weekends, holidays. Tracking your sales by promotion and channel this indicates what acquisition efforts are working, when they're working, and where they're working, right? So looking for trends in, in sales and comparing those to your marketing efforts can help you spend your ad dollars much more efficiently and effectively. You want to track your average sale for a customer's first purchase, their second purchase, their third purchase. And you want to see what happens through the purchase cycle. Does it increase, decrease, where does it drop off? You want to develop strategies on your site to increase your average sale. Your higher average sale enables you to leverage your fixed pick, pack, and ship cost down as a percentage. So growing your average sale enables you to grow your total overall sales, but it also reduces your fixed costs. You want to track profit per order. It's important to understand who your most profitable customers are and what they're ordering, right, and where they come from. Your high-profit customers are your most valuable, and you want to make sure you retain them, which leads us into retention rate. Retention rate, a retained customer, is someone who purchases from you three times or more. It's an important indicator to understand how customers feel about your product and if they will become advocates. Retained customers are your most profitable sales. A great example of the power of retention is Zappos. 70% of Zappos sales come from retained customers, customers who have made Zappos a habit. From my own experience, I can tell you that retention is the key to long-term sustainability in e-commerce. It's where your advocates are and where you're going to get referrals. It's your least expensive sales investment. I mean, think about 70% of Zappos sales coming from retained customers. So as their sales increased, their retained customers increased as well. It's powerful. Amazon Prime is not about free two-day shipping. That's a benefit, along with same-day shipping, streaming videos, Amazon Fresh, and 22 other benefits of belonging to Prime. 
Amazon Prime is a retention weapon that very few competitors will ever be able to penetrate. It makes Amazon a habit for customers. So always think about retention with every program you develop. The lifetime value of a customer is how much profit is generated by a customer over their lifetime with you. It's an important measurement to understand how much you can spend to acquire a new customer. Inventory levels by item. You can't build sales without being in stock, especially on your critical items. So you want to maintain a high in-stock position at all times, especially on your top sellers. An inventory turnover measures how fast you're turning your inventory into cash to sustain operations. If you finance your inventory or you have lines of credit or you have good payment terms with your suppliers, you want to be able to sell your inventory before you have to pay for it. So when it comes to managing inventory, there are a ton of systems out there to help you better manage your inventory in turns to ensure you're in stock and minimizing your cash burn. Trying to do it manually, very difficult. Spreadsheets are nice, but you can't successfully run a business with them. You need automation when it comes to inventory. But here's an example that puts this all together. Netflix monthly subscription, their monthly sale, is on average $8.14 per user. They have an estimated customer acquisition cost of around $18 and a profit margin of around 33% or $2.64 per user per month. This means that if they have a retention rate anywhere lower than seven months, they're losing money. So the only way to keep a viable business is to make sure their retention rate is extremely high, well over seven months. So Netflix has done that by acquiring and producing amazing content. They then make sure that each piece of content reaches the right audience and building a sophisticated recommendation engine that keeps people watching more and more. I mean, they got me. The end result is an average retention rate of 25 months per user, which in turn generates an average customer lifetime value of approximately $66, right? So that number, compared to the average $18 customer acquisition cost, that's what makes Netflix a profitable business. Retention drives the business viability. I can't say it enough. There are platforms out there to help you with retention and retention measurement and retention marketing. Invest in one, I guarantee you the payback will be swift. But here's a quick retention tool that you can start tomorrow. <clears throat> Each week, call five of your customers, single purchase customers, multi-purchase customers, customers who don't like you, customers that had a bad experience, five of everything, right? Give a nice, well-rounded group and give them an incentive for taking the time to talk to you. Ask them a couple of uh, simple questions, what they liked about you, what they don't like, what they'd like to see you do better. Let them speak, let them vent, and just listen. It's an amazing retention builder. And it's also the best lost customer recovery tool you'll ever see. You're going to hear how customers really feel, and you'll get back a customer who had a bad experience and vowed never to shop with you again. You'll also get some good social media mojo because these people will talk about how the CEO or the VP or the manager of your company called them to ask their opinion. We live in a digital world, but we're still in the people business. Always remember that. So just to recap on sales, these sales-focused KPIs all work together to analyze, to, to analyze your sales in different ways, and it'll highlight the effectiveness of your customer acquisition efforts. So knowing your sales by channel, by time of day, by day of the week, it'll help you make better marketing and advertising decisions. Customer retention is critical to understand. Retaining customers is the most important key to long-term success. Find the retention automation measurement tool that works best for your business and use it. Managing inventory and inventory turnover requires automation to optimize the process. So let's move on now to the marketing KPIs. It's important to understand your site traffic. How many visits your site's getting hourly, daily, weekly, monthly? It's important to understand this relative to your sales trends because you're tracking your sales trends hourly, daily, weekly, monthly. You may see times when you get traffic and no sales, sales and very little traffic. You know, comparing and understanding these trends will help you make better ad decisions, it'll help you make better content placement decisions, and it'll help you with your advertising channel decisions. It's also important to understand how many are unique visitors versus returning visitors. 
This helps you to understand your customer retention efforts as well as your effectiveness of advertising. You should track your site visits and sales for every marketing and advertising effort you run. If you get PR, watch the traffic and the sales from the content. If you run ads, check the traffic and the sales from each ad. If you run affiliate programs, watch the traffic and the sales. If you run ads and get traffic and no sales, there's an issue with the landing page. If you run ads and get no traffic, there's an issue with the ad or the ad platform. Many advertisers will talk to you about ad latency or view through conversion. Um, you know, viewers see your ad, but they react later. Uh, you know, it's a bunch of poppycock. It's designed to keep you on the platform spending more money. I'm going to tell you from my history, from my experience of wasting millions of dollars advertising, a very small portion of customers have, are, are can, to be considered view through or, or latency. It's very, very small. If you run video ads on YouTube, Hulu, or traditional television and you're not getting traffic, the ad isn't working. Shut it down, reformulate it, go back to the drawing board. If you run ads on Facebook and you're not getting clicks, the ads aren't working. Go back, test other creative. A week is about all you need to see if something's working or not. And if your site traffic coupled with your ads, it'll show you this quickly, right? Always look at your traffic sources. Are the, where are the channels your visitors are coming from? What marketing, tactic, what marketing tactics are working in those channels and what needs improvement? Are they all coming from paid search? SEO efforts, PR efforts. By looking at the channels, you can see where your ads and acquisition tactics are paying off. You may see that a good number of acquisitions are coming from non-paid sources. By knowing this, you can push more effort into that channel. But if, it, if they're coming from spend and, and your acquisition cost looks good, spend more money and you'll drive more sales. Track your conversion rate by channel, by device, by operating system. All that info is available in Google Analytics. Out of the visitors to your site, how many make a purchase? How can you grow this rate? The average e-commerce website conversion rate is less than 3%, and on mobile it's less than 2%. Lower mobile conversion is primarily because of payment issues, which is where Apple Pay, Amazon Pay, PayPal, Stripe, and these other seamless payment methods will help you. If you could improve your site conversion rate, with your existing ad spend, this would grow your sales, reduce your customer acquisition cost. I can't stress conversion rate enough because it's low-hanging fruit. Clients come to us all the time for help growing sales. It's the number one reason they hire us. The first place we look is improving conversions. We look at the site, how it renders on mobile, what payment options, what the purchase flow is. Again, you're already spending ad dollars. You're already spending money and effort to get visitors to your site. Make the most of it. Your site should always be improving. You should be A-B testing pages, user experience changes. You want to do this in an effort to drive more conversions, especially on the checkout process. 800 Pet Meds, for example, has a 17.7% conversion rate. Pro Flowers, 16%. QVC, 16%. Staples, 16%. Find the best converting e-commerce site in your industry and look at what they do differently. Look at how they manage customer flow through on purchase. Let me give you an example from my personal experience. A few years back, I founded a company called 800razors.com. In our first few months of business, we averaged a marketing spend of $200,000 a month across all channels, including television. We were running television ads. Our average monthly unique site visits were 120,000 visits. So therefore, it was costing us $1.66 per new visit. Our conversion rate on the site at the time was 3.2%. That led to a customer acquisition cost of $52.08 and an average first-time sale of $27. So we were very upside down. If we focused on improving conversion rate. You know, there's tools out there like Crazy Egg, Optimizely, Google Analytics especially. And we constantly made changes to improve the user experience, remove purchase and search barriers for the customer, especially on the checkout page. We went to a one-page checkout. Within six months, the conversion rate was consistently over 8%. That increased our sales, obviously, on the same marketing spend, but it reduced our customer acquisition cost to $20.75. So we never stopped analyzing and testing the site and looking for ways to improve conversions. And there were some times where we saw consistently 15% conversion rates. So just to recap, 
traffic source data on unique visits and returning visits compared with sales data for the same time periods will show you the effectiveness of your advertising. If you see clicks and no sales, problem is the landing page. An ad with no clicks is a bad ad or platform. And don't buy into view through or latency hype by advertisers. You should know in a week if your ads work or not. Grow your sales by growing your conversion rate. Your site should be in a constant state of improvement to improve conversions. Understand it by device, by operating system, and copy high converting website formulas. Okay, now we're going to move on to customer service KPIs. These may seem intuitive, but you'd be surprised how many companies don't measure them. Especially today, where you have so many places for customers to vent their frustration and rate your company. You want to stay on top of customer service issues. Don't forget about social media, because social media is, is used by many customers as an outlet for customer service correspondence, right? People write on Facebook, I, I, I have a problem with a product. You know, you have to be able to, you know, incorporate that into your whole customer service uh, uh, um, KPIs. So it's important to focus on response and resolution time. 90% of the time, you can turn even the most irate customer into a positive by responding and resolving the problem quickly. Classifying the reason, right? is uh, the reason you're getting calls. Positives and negatives, right? It'll show you patterns. By looking at like problems or like positives, you'll uncover issues that can improve your business that you didn't even know about. It could be a product defect. It could be a systems issue. It could be a website issue. It could be a positive thing that could be a marketing ploy that you didn't even realize you had that customers are reacting to. We have one client. It's a Fortune 100 consumer product company. We started working with them a few years ago setting up their direct-to-consumer business. They've always sold their products through brick-and-mortar resellers, so they were a few steps be, be, uh, removed from the end user, right? Once we began with direct-to-consumer, we noticed an above-average complaint about a specific part on their main product. <clears throat> Customers complained that it broke easy. Because the complaints went through their retailers up to them in a very disparate way, they didn't have any way of consolidating and classifying them. Once we began to show them, they went back and looked at some internal issues and realized it had been a problem for years. They began to realize it was one of the biggest reasons they weren't able to grow this, this specific product line at retail because their retention was horrible. They lost customers after the first, pur first purchase, and people were rating the product horribly. So let's now speak about Net Promoter Score, which is part of customer service. Net Promoter Score, I believe, is one of the most important metrics in the digital world. There's so many places for customers to give feedback about your company and products. You want to know how users feel about your brand. You want to know how to develop advocates who will talk about your product on social media, refer you to their friends and family, and help you to acquire new customers. So Net Promoter Score is a score of how well your company is doing at building relationships with customers. The most successful brands build relationships with customers. The process is simple to execute, and that's one, That's another reason I love it. You ask it's, it's one simple, uh, um, one simple uh, um, question. You ask customers how likely they are on a scale of one to ten to recommend you. Their replies put them in three categories: promoters, nines and tens; passives, sevens to eights; a detractor, zero to six. You take the percentage of respondents who fall under the promoter category, tens and nines and subtract it from the detractors, zeros to six. Voila, your net promoter score. Get rid of the sevens and eights. It's easy to implement. It's only one question. You can implement this into your normal autoresponder retention email series, your welcome email series, and you'll generally get 50 to 75% usage after about three, ma three emails. Most email service providers have a template for this already built in to their uh, um, templates for uh, email into their email templates. It's a valuable metric, one that you can compare against other brands in your channel. Do you have a low net, prom net promoter score? You can look deeper into finding out what the cause is and fixing it. If it's high, you want to make sure you maintain it. Again, it's about this measures how well you're doing at building relationships with your customers. So Starbucks has a net promoter score of 77. Dunkin' Donuts has a score of 9. Apple has a score of 47. Microsoft 45, Facebook has a negative 21, just to give you a little bit of perspective. So 
to summarize the right KPIs, measure uh, the right KPIs to measure, begin with your strategy, and improving them will move your business forward. The most important KPIs work together to build and measure sales, and build and measure retention, manage customer acquisition costs, and measure marketing and ad effectiveness. You want to focus on lowering your acquisition costs, improving your customer retention, and growing your sales through a higher converting website. Pay attention to your customers and stay on top of service issues. So I hope we provided you with some actionable takeaways today.